Thursday, and you know what that means. Welcome to Max Wrestling 508. Yes, the TSK TakeOver is continuing. It's in full effect. Hell, it's in bonus effect because Mike Larkin's back. We're here to deliver every twist and swerve in all the crazy wide world of professional wrestling. Coming up tonight, WWE's women's division finally gets their own U.S. title. How soon until they get their first intercontinental title? And is this too many titles? I have said the word title too many times. It's lost all of its meaning. Plus, it's match week eight in the Golden Gauntlet. Last week, Beer cut Travis Walker Anderson's reign short. He's now the world champion. He is the man to beat. Who will he go up against this week? And can he make it? Two on the bounce, plus massive, I mean massive changes to the promo series card that you do not want to miss. So do not forget to hit the follow button right here, the thumbs up button, subscribe button, all that fun stuff. And then, of course, follow us on all the audio platforms, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is you get your podcast. And, of course, for all things Max Wrestling and, of course, some TSK, head on over to the beautifully done website, maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com. And... Before I run all out of breath, head over after this. We did the pre-show earlier. After this drops, go right to TikTok. Cypher the Prophet on the brand new show, After Max. Hosted each and every week by the current reigning television champion, Cypher. Like last week, we went straight into the nonsense. The NXT, the AEW. Nope, we're not not doing the head-to-head. We'll get into it a little bit later. First, we have to get into the fun stuff. So, the fun stuff. And I love this. Some people think that the gorilla position is where King Kong stands. And because of that, this is shit Mark saying. They hate Japanese wrestlers. They know less than we forget. They don't know who's the wrestler. They're having a wank to Jim Cornette. Not a single GCSE between them. This is shit Mark says. So I scoured the internet, uh, got DC, found a couple things, and I just, I, of course, I had to look at the usual suspects, the Jim Cornettes, the Eric Bischoffs, and it, it's, it's like with, in politics when everybody kept saying you couldn't keep Donald Trump's name out of your mouth if you're a Democrat and vice versa if you're a Republican. Eric Bischoff cannot keep Dave Meltzer out of his mouth. He calls him a parasite for literal no good reason. Literal no good reason. This guy's talking about some nonsense uh, on, on his fucking page, and he brings up, yeah, Dave Meltzer's a parasite. All right, way out of left field, but hey, that's 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 uh, that's fucking Eric Bischoff for you. I, I think at this point, it's just it's just fun to hate on Uncle Dave. Uh, just like it's fun to hate on AEW. Apparently, um, people are just like fuck Dave Meltzer. Well, and and you know, Dave's probably like, you know, the fuck did I do? Dave did nothing. Dave's nothing. Dave. Don't get me wrong. Then, I have, you can have your opinion. You can love or love or hate Uncle Dave. We get that. You know, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. But like, he's doing the same thing most of these other jerk offs are doing. Just saying. And then Just you know, saying. I mean, as uh, Mike, as you can definitely attest to, I hate everything. That a boy. And, and everyone. That a boy. Everyone. Much. I hate you. I hate you. I literally hate almost everything. I will. I will shit on everything. I, I I'll shit on Melter, Bischoff. Like, do I think Melter's a tool? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Is Eric Bischoff a tool? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All day long. He's a wrench. He's <laughs> beautifully put. He's a <laughs> yeah. He's a socket wrench, if anything. <laughs> Ratchet. Well, it's it goes back to Rat the fact that I mean. Well, it goes back to the fact that with all these guys have podcasts, like you mentioned, Eric Bischoff, Jim Cornette, mind you. In their heyday, whether it be different variations, whether they're announcers, managers, or on-screen characters, a lot of them really see more what we've seen in the 90s and the 80s and even early 2000s, but a lot of them kind of remove themselves from what's going on today, and where they're still stuck 20, 25 plus years ago. For example, I mean, you look like Jim Cornette, back when Arya Davari and Sean Davari, when they first did the Saudi show, and they were in that angle, so it was the two Iranians against the Saudis, which was Mansoor and his creative freedom. Fuck you, Mansoor. So, there, <laughs> Mansoor so was involved in that. Mansoor, excuse me. Yes, thank you. But th- that's the thing, too, and like Cornette's talking about, you know, well, if, I, if this was me, god damn it, I would have had a fucking done a riot, god damn it! But it's just like, ha! Huh? I gotta get him right now, ha! Huh? But it's like, Jim, it's not the 70s anymore. This is not the territory days where you want people throwing rocks and slashing your tires and putting a bat up in there. A lot of things have changed, and a lot of people cannot change with the times. That goes in any aspect of life. So this is just this is just Bischoff being Bischoff. He's Bischoffing, if you will. 
it, it, it's a lot of uh and that's a lot of boomer boomer uh attitude or mentality like, there you go yeah. boomer mentality and they're just back in my day and you know the back in the good old days back in the good old days were they really good or were they old now? man yells at cloud as as a guy who got sixty plus episodes deep into the retro rewind, hey, there was some good, but there was a lot of bad, and I didn't even get deep into the attitude era. So, hey, what, hey, what does that you tell know what? you? And we were all kids during that stuff, and we thought that was the greatest shit ever. But looking hey. back on it now, that we're you know all you know adults in in Dan's case, grumpy, there you, um, go. you know, old men, you know, it wasn't that good. No, and I honestly, I think. With, it's the same thing with music, with movies. Like every generation thinks that their generation was the absolute best. All others are shit. Like w- Rob, you and I, we grew up in the Attitude Era time frame. Back then, you thought, "Oh my god, every week is great." Even some of the McMahon Austin stuff was stupid. Oh no, beyond really, stupid. I mean, was. I listen. I'd always say, like, I started around the Ruthless Aggression era in 02. I mean, what a great way to come in. You have the Billy and Chuck wedding, Katie Vick, and everything all into one. Like, I mean, 2002, it had its high moments and it had its high points. But, I mean, when you have necrophilia and Billy and Chuck doing a wedding, I mean, hey, funny as it was. But, I mean, that's the time period that we had. And if it not being, like, WWE pretty much bragging that they beat WCW the year prior, that was mainly the general consensus of what the storylines were back in the day. So you had a very, you know, ongoing, repetitious formula. Repetitious indeed, yeah. It was uh, also a lot of shock factor. As much shock factor as you could get, especially with, as you said, the necrophilia, as blatantly put. Uh, I did I did love the little segment. It was a Chris Van Bleet. It was a, uh, him and uh, Billy Gunn they were talking about. It. He's like, we had no idea where they were going with this. None. We were just fucking None. hanging on for the ride. Yeah. I don't think they even knew. I, that's, what, that's what he means. Like, they didn't know where they were going to go. They didn't really think they were going to go as far as, like, well, wait a minute. You guys should get married. Like, wait a minute. Huh? What? Well, well, look at it. Twenty two years later, Billy Gunn finally finished his story and gave the famous hit to Rico back at Wrestle Dream. Sixty three year old Rico making an appearance for Marseille and Montsoir. The guy did not look like he aged. Not one no, bit. Not, not at all. Not, not one. At what all. is his secret? I want to know. I'm trying to find. Uh, fa- Fountain of Youth. The man's a former cop. He used to was an American Gladiator. He was a security for a lot of people. Oh, that's I mean, the what man it was. Active. American Gladiator. Yes. Right. That was over 30 years ago, Mo. That's right. Yeah, Billy. he was in the 90s. Oh, my God. I think God. him and Billy Gunn got some secret juice or some shit. Well, yeah. Did you, know, you see the fucking American Gladiators? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they were not so... They were, they were gladiator in, in physique, not so much in athleticism, but that, that's Oh, not, look at Magnus. Well, how do you think TNA got Nick Aldis Magnus? If Dixie caught a honey, had a little crush on him for seeing him in American Gladiators UK, honey. And that's how we got Magnus in TNA. Because oh, you saw him in American Gladiators UK. Fat. And now look, now look at this guy. Yeah, right. Now look at this dude. Right. You t- thank Dixie Carter for absolutely everything, big dog. Seriously, absolutely everything. <laughs> Thanks, okay. honey. Thanks. <laughs> you guys are killing me. All right. Um. So I got another one. DC brought this one to my attention. There was rumors circulating. I don't really. I'm still thinking they're rumors that Malachi Black could be leaving AEW. I think even he batted him down, saying like he's. He's just there. He's not he getting did. used. So Brody went on there, says he's going to miss his brother Malachi. And then some, what is it, Takara World comes back with this entire rant. I'm going to read it verbatim. So nobody, please, for the love of God, come at me. Dude. Mind you, all caps rage. All caps rage. Thank you. Thank you, DC. All I appreciate that. All caps rage. Very, very important. Dude, shut your bitch ass up. You're the clear reason why Malachi Black's singles run didn't stay on track in his early AEW run. I hate the day you and that Buddy Matthews came to AEW. His AEW career alone would have been AEW World Champion, not Trios Tag Trios Champion. I'm, huh? Some of that wasn't English, but I mean that's the internet for you these days. I mean, we imagine are, telling Brody King to shut your bitch ass well, up. That's that's yeah, literally right. where I was going to start. I was like, that's the last thing I'm going to do. I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not Darby Allen. Okay, I think Darby no. Allen is probably the only person in the world that could tell him to shut his bitch ass up. They're going to fight anyway, so whatever. Right. But whatever. I'm not. I'm no. No, thank you. Mm-mm. No, I'm not doing no. it. And then, no. and then, secondly, let's be frank. We were talking about 
even back then, the the overbloated roster that AEW had, you couldn't push a Malachi Black because you're gonna you're gonna have to pull a Kenny or you're gonna have to pull uh, I think a Hangman at the time or some other ones a Jericho, which think you probably should just fucking pull the Jericho, but. There was there was that speculation of who's going to lose their spot for Malachi to get one, and then it turned into they were the best trios out there, the best faction. You wanted to be that faction. They won the belts, and their entire run has been lackluster. But that's not at the fault of Brody nor fucking B- uh, Buddy Matthews. Buddy, it's it, it, no. it, it, none of them three. None of the three is it at their fault. It's it's of the booking. This has been just bad booking. We've been telling, we've been saying for fucking months, years, even that. They've been built like shit. They, they have perfect opportunities to give them tag titles. They fumble it. They give them perfect opportunities to get trio titles. They're a what? They've won them once? Once, yeah. In a very lackluster reign. So, again, <laughs> it, what does that have to do with the other two members of the faction? How does that stifle this one man? The reality is, is the stifling has come from the booking. They haven't found anything for him, or they haven't felt the need to push him in as a main event or whatever have you. And it's the same exact thing that we would say about anyone in any other place. Oh, well, he's a main eventer. He's a main eventer. He's a main eventer. And they didn't push him, and it's going to either be a fumble or they're going to eventually turn it around. I'm hoping they turn it around. He's not leaving. So No, at least yeah. not right now. Thank God. Right the- the the absolute cringy thing I, I think though is people after he put that video out on IG where basically he said every time I have a singles match it seems this comes up I'm not hurt I'm not retiring I'm not leaving people are calling him a liar oh, what yeah, the fuck too. what the actual fuck you, you're hearing it from the back. you're hearing it from the man's mouth himself like what more does he have to do and this guy he doesn't he's not leaving. Well, not only, not only that, it, it, it's not like he's, and, and I'm no, no disrespect to the ladies, it's not like he's one of the girls that's always on TikTok and he's just going to make a video. He, he's, not, he's not Johnny TV, okay? He's not no, Johnny no. TV. So to see him do this has got to mean something. And, and, and the majority of people are blowing it off. And it's like, that. first off, you guys are the reason why fucking wrestling's dying, okay? It's because you could just, well, it, it's got to be my way or the highway. It really doesn't. Go along for the ride. I promise you it's going to get bumpy, but that's kind of the point of it. But they bitch and moan. Bitch and moan over everything. I don't believe you. You're fucking, you're pulling my leg. You're going to leave for WWE because your wife's there. I thought Samantha Irving was supposed to end up in AEW overnight because Ricochet's there. Where's she at? Hello, Samantha Irving in AEW. Nowhere. Boy. She's going to focus on a music career, man. <laughs> so again. Boy. So, they, think, they haven't stopped on her either. <laughs> no. No. And you know, honestly, Mo. But even add, you know, you talk about booking, and I've seen this mentioned on, on Twitter, other Facebook groups, even TikTok. Like, someone said, well, it like you mentioned, the booking. And, you know, people said, well, Tony Khan, ultimately, you know, it, it's to quote D- President Dwight Eisenhower, the buck stops here. The hey. buck stops with Tony. Ultimately, his call, his company... He has had plenty of opportunity to push Malachi Black. You know, it, am I saying Malachi is not going to eventually leave when his contract is up? Maybe. Plus, it's not our business what, what his contract status is. And when his, his contract could be up end of the year, could be up in six months, another year, we don't know. And, and the guy who kind of... You know, all caps rage to Brody King. To it, I just say to that, say it to his face. Say it to his face. To Brody King, <laughs> big fucking Brody King, and have the balls to say it to his face. You all, Gu- guaranteed, he probably has to use a step ladder to actually nah. look Brody in the eye, though. I mean, to go to you go on your Stupid point about nerd. characters. To go on about characters real quick. I mean, you look at like we had like people talk about Carry and Cross and like how he was booked the trajectory of his career in WWE, especially since coming back. But I mean, you finally have something for him, and people will complain about him. But I'm like, Carry and Cross has had a WrestleMania moment. He's having the time of his life. Now we have the Final Testament feud, which is going to be off the chain, and they're in, you know they're incorporating Scarlet, who's going to wrestle with Nikki Cross. So there's that added element to it. I think people, when it comes to seeing those trajectory of characters, they automatically think they're unhappy. When it's like, no, again. It, Mind your business, number one, but also number two, 
we always talk about things letting play out and so to speak. But at the end of the day, you see Malachi Black from when he first came in and he absolutely squashed uh, Cody. And then we got the House of Black and him and my, uh, Brody King were a tag team on the indies. You put everything together. Let the pieces fall as they may, number one. And number two, also to put it in the bluntest of terms, everybody, just shut the fuck up. Hey. Just shut the fuck up. To quote to quote Fred Durst and Method Man in together now, just shut the fuck up. The fuck shut out. the fuck out. In together now. What? What? Great song. But it's funny that you bring up Cross, though, because people are actually starting to get interested in this feud with White right. Six. And people mm-hmm. are like, wow. You know, for those of us that already knew the capabilities of Kerry and Cross... We knew. Some of y'all just had to wait and let it let it play like, out. Just watch, just watch the impact run, man. Twenty eighteen to twenty nine. Watch the impact run. For those the that do comedic, their history, I know the most. most. And his comedic timing is good too. I mean, hey. the video that he and Scarlett did, where she says, "Hey, we gotta go." They just abducted Miz, and he says, <laughs> "How long ago?" And she said, "About thirty minutes." And he says, "Oh, he's, he's already dead. dead. Oh, he's already, he's already dead. dead. He's already dead." <laughs> Basically, saying, eh. "Fuck him." That's fucking and some of, us are, some of us already knew that. And now I the mean, rest of the world is finally catching the fuck up. They're getting I mean, back on track with him. Hmm. I'll, I'll put it bluntly to add on to these two terms. You got these TDM, you know, these TDMFs, if you will, as I like to call them. These tiny dick motherfuckers. Hey, tiny really dick just, motherfuckers. motherfuckers. That just have to come out of the woodwork. It's like, oh god, he's speeding with the Miz. Mind you, now that the Miz is a veteran and he's just someone with such pearls of wisdom and knowledge in his own right. I'm like, first and foremost, it makes sense because Bo Dallas and the Miz were in the Miz Taraj and Dexter Loomis and the Miz had a feud. So he's got beef with two members of the Wyatt Six as well. So, I mean, it's like people, I Again, let it play out. Two, shut the fuck up. And number three, just fucking enjoy it and actually learn something. You know what I'm saying? Absorb, adapt, take it in. Take it in. Got it. Did that, somebody frame that right there because that's exactly what needs to be said. Let Be patient. Let it happen. Let it fucking happen. All right. Last one before we move on to some uh, some talks about the women's championships. Wrestling News had dropped something. Says what changes need to happen in AEW to get attendance and ratings up. Uh, let's just call this dude Drunken Yoda. That's his quoted name or whatever. He says, have Tony Khan <laughs> accept the truth. AEW is not on the level of WWE. Move to smaller venues. Let Tony Khan move away from booking. Hire a good booker. I propose Jim Cornette. Wow. So, um, uh, the drunken Yoda was doing okay. Um, there's probably two things that he got right. Well, in, re- in reality, they already are, already are in smaller venues to keep it funky. Let's be honest here. Like, they're already in yeah, the, the smaller... The Bridgeport, Connecticut, yeah. The yeah. Bridgeport show last night was in a smaller venue. Exactly. So, I mean, most of the, they're not getting these, you know, 10,000-seat arenas as often as, as WWE would get. But he's not wrong on, on Tony Khan completely losing booking and hiring a booker. I'll take that as one and two. But, uh... I, I, you all remember how all right. Jim Cornette's run in MLW went? Yeah. I mean, All I remember was Sammy, uh, Sammy Callahan, uh, spitting water in his face, and that was great. Oh God! Well, I mean, if you really think about Jim Cornette booking, he would probably, much like when he was in Ring of Honor, he would send guys like Kevin St- Steen and El Generico. He'd be letting like friggin' Moxley and Orange Cassidy get the damn pockets of the fucking plumber. We're just gonna fucking send them home, God damn it! So I mean, you have that mindset of people he doesn't like. He'd probably be sending them home. He'd be trying to find other ways. He'd probably fire everybody because he's cuckoo cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He'd probably yeah. slap him like yeah. He'd probably <laughs> slap him slap him like he did Santino. He'd probably get into a verbal exchange like he did with Kevin Thorne at the time because Jim Cornette is just that bad shit crazy. So I mean, him. I mean, look at how Smoky Mountain Wrestling turned up for God's sake. Oh, yeah. so, I that mean, shit says it us. yeah. I mean, it's kind of enough said in its own, but let's 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 keep it funky. And the reality, I guess, yeah. maybe the the hypocriticism of this fucking ignorant drunken Yoda over here. Jim Cornette hates AEW. He yeah. doesn't like the Young Bucks. He hates Kenny Omega. He is not a fan of their company and what they produce. And to say, hey, let's have him book it. He'd just say, all right, cool, scrap your show. No, what, I'll tell you what he would do. He would give every single fucking title to the Outriders. Oh, God. Or FTR. The Outrunners. F- the Outrunners. Or Outrunners. Outrunners, yeah. Outrunners, Outriders. First off, the Outrunners do I'm deserve right. some type of goal. They're amazing, and they've done nothing, and it's fantastic. But that's It point. reminds me of when, when Jericho and friggin' Lance Storm were the Thrill Seekers in Smoky yes. Mountain when they were doing the arcade. Yep. That's what I'm talking about right there. Bring back the fucking Windbreakers. 
It, oh, man, God. if they need it, if they uh, go get Zicky Dice, get, make him a trio. <laughs> there you go. There you That's go. what I'm talking about. I'm with it. Let's go. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, that shit, that's a. Uh, that was uh, shit Mark say. That was a fun segment. A whole bunch of laughs. Let's get into a fun topic, though. Like I said, we, we uh, found out on SmackDown. They were uh, unveiled the uh, Women's United States Championship. I believe they're going to have a tournament. Yeah. And then yeah. now I'm already thinking, or at least the internet, or the wrestling internet, if you will, is already thinking that we're immediately going to turn around and have a Women's Intercontinental Championship. So... I want to ask if you can we have one without the other? No. Well, that was the point. Okay. So DC uh, says no. I, I mean, if you're gonna have one, you might as well have the other. Okay. Right. I mean, you have a broad spectrum of women from all three brands. I mean, if you look at veterans that could hold it, you could have a Mi Chin who's been working her butt off for these last dog on two years. The HBIC had Betty in charge. Hey. You have Chelsea Green. You have Piper Niven. Yeah, yeah, you, you, have got, women. you gotta say it right, Mike. You gotta say it right. Chelsea Green. Green. I mean, you got Piper Niven. You got Lash Legend. You got Chikari. Uh. I'm oh, sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. I mean, you have so many people that are so right in that system and I mean we've seen Lash Legend and Jakar go to friggin Smackdown I mean you have a lot of talented women there it's much like with the men so there's so many people that you can really integrate and have integral roles there so I mean it's something you have to have the broad spectrum and the general consensus of where you want to go have a veteran hold it work with the younger talents there's so many things that you could do and it's very exciting for everybody to really step up their game too so I mean I'm here for it I think it's about time I think the recognition is well overdue oh, yeah. so let's rock it Absolutely, and with the roster being as deep as it is, they they can they can have two mid card titles uh, easily. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I like it. It, uh, it was reported a while back, maybe a month or so back, that the WWE was working on mid card titles for the women for both Raw and SmackDown. Now, typically, the what they'll do is they won't inter- introduce a new belt until the replicas are ready. Hey, so what this tells me is a the women's U.S. replicas are probably ready. They're probably just waiting until they can crown a new champ, uh, the first champion. Probably, I would say the December pay per view if they have one. Probably you'll see it relatively soon. I would think. Now the women's intercontinental. My guess is either one of two things: one, the real belt's not ready yet, or b. The replicas aren't ready yet. My guess would have to be the replicas, because how hard is it to make the same thing with a white strap? Pretty much. I'm just, I'm just I'm not trying to be a dick. But now, I mean, here's they're, the they're... question. It's, another thing is could be how long you have been in the works, because, you know, they just got a brand new belt for, oh. you know, that Jay got. It could mm. be that they had the replicas ready with the old design, and now they have to go back in and paint them, which it's a lot more involved, involved than people realize. I'll paint you. I'll paint you. I'll paint you. Mercedes, I love you. You're a blessing to my company. Goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we, we've established that you can't have one without the other. And at the same time, I think we've kind of established that there, it's not too many. I don't feel like it's overloading. Again, I, I, I am one. Of, I guess I'm the minority. The one that's not watching is it is often. I'm not paying attention. I I, could, I want to say I could give a shit, but I, I like this because I've I've been that guy. That's we we've looked at all the talent on that side. Especially, I'm a giant fan of Piper Niven. The fact that she's gotten little to no true run is bullshit to me. Um, but again, I like this. I like the idea of it. I think DC has a point. Well, he is the belt guy, so of course he's got a point. He's going to know when these belts are going to drop or not drop. Um, who would you want to be the first U.S. Women's Champ? And if we're going to get, if we're going to bring out the IC, who's going to be the first IC Women's Champ? Charlotte. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, I brought up this point in the TSK chat the other day. I think what you do. Bring Charlotte back. Don't give her the title, but have her in the tournament, maybe in the final, so that whoever beats her gets that rub of saying that they. Where beat even is she? Charlotte. I don't mean to cut you off, but where the hell even is she? Injured. So her, injured still. Still? So the, the ACL, yeah. a, MCL, PCL, PCL, the valves. All of it. Fucked. 
All the of it. ACLU. The whole, the whole knee. Gonskis. If you really look at champions, if you want to, like, for both brands, if you have an intercontinental in the U.S., I mean, for U.S. or women, you could tell the story of Meacham getting released and then coming back it's just because it has a feel-good story and she's a veteran. Uh, for the women, if you want to look at Raw, one of the hottest baby faces right now is Lyra Valkyria, and she showed up and showed out with Io in that battle royal. And, I mean, former NXT women's champion, she's wrestled Becky. So, I mean, a hot young talent like Lyra Valkyria would do wonders for her to really put her on that launching pad. So, I mean... The sky's the limit, but those, if I had to pick, those would be my two, just because the youth, the, the youth and the veteran. I'm honestly, I'm going to concur with you on Lyra, but for SmackDown, you know, I think, honestly, the argument could be made for either Piper Niven or Chelsea, Chelsea Green. Green. And it's not as cool without Samantha doing it. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. I love it. All right. Well, uh unfortunately well not unfortunately it's time to move into some fun stuff i don't want anybody to wait any longer i want everyone to find out who the first finalist is in the next week's number one contender golden gauntlet match i am beer Unfortunately, I had to go through one. A guy who I called a brother. A friend. in the walker, Mr. Anderson. Nothing personal. It's just business. And now that brings me to you, Chad. Remember a couple of months ago when you dodged me at King of the Mic? And you threw in the towel because you know I'd have embarrassed you. But when there's an opportunity to become a champion in this sport, you gotta do whatever it takes. And you were the one that dodged me. Now you know what? It wouldn't pop on. It wouldn't phase me if you do do it again. And then again, and again, and again. Because you and Feeney were two people that stabbed me in the back. Mr. Phoenix and me have only just built bridges. We have only just sorted out business. But don't worry, Craig. You do owe me one. This isn't about Craig. This isn't about Captain. This is about you, Chad. Because there's nothing more that I want to do to humiliate you to what you did to me. That stupid, goofy mask. If I ever saw it in this place again, I would set it on fire. And you call yourself a lawyer. You couldn't defend an innocent man all the way to death row. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. And uh, this brings me to Mr. Cypher. Corey. Cypher. Big dog. I will go through anything it takes to win any championship. If I could reach my dream of becoming the world heavyweight champion, you have no idea, sir. What I will do to become be a two belts. And there has been a lot of bad shit that's been going on around recently. But as much as there is a lot on my mind, at the same time, I'm trying to think of the positives right now. Chad, I got a word of advice. Stop. I would not even bother even conducting what you're going to do. And let me tell you what, save the embarrassment. The champ is going to put you down in the dirt you belong. Also, Mr. Larkin, don't think I've forgotten about you. 
I know your insecurities. I know how insecure you are. Like I said last week, you're gonna be a machine without any power because the power is in my hands. World Heavyweight Championship. Chad, lights out. Yeah, how we doing, buddy? Me and you, Golden Gauntlet. Are you ready for this? Let's go. <laughs> Dear, hello. Let's not forget what I did to you. I know you haven't forgotten, and I certainly haven't either. This is called the Golden Gauntlet for a reason. Look at me. I am the Golden Gauntlet. Look how well you're doing, buddy. The world champion now. You've beat the captain. Look how far you are in this Golden Gauntlet. You're doing so well. Nothing but respect for you, brother. Never trust a brother. Never, ever trust a brother. There's no one in this world you can trust. Everyone's going to turn on you. Absolutely everybody. Of course, when you have gold, then we're likely to do it even more. It is a nice championship you have there. I really, really like it. I do miss it. Do want to bring it home. I'm hoping that we can have a nice little promo battle here. Hopefully I end up with a win. Put me in line for a future match against you for all the championship. And I can bring it home properly. That championship's coming home. You see? This mask is gold. All I'm missing now is a bit of gold on my shoulder. And I'm back where I need to be. Back on top. You know what I'm capable of. You should be afraid. Very, very afraid. Because I will be the one to take that championship away from you. I'm hoping I could be the one to take this championship away from you. I've not really had much interaction with you in terms of promos, one-on-one. -on -one. Chad versus my, Chad versus Bia, but I'm very excited, very, very excited. I've got a lot of respect for you, and I'm hoping to bring that championship back here eventually. I have no respect for you at all. You stole that championship as far as I'm aware. You earned that championship. That championship is on your shoulder because you earned it. You fought your battles, you've defeated your demons, and you have got your reward. Not many other people here can say they've done that. You are nothing, you are a fool, and you are a waste of time. I know that Dragon Club didn't really... wasn't really for you in the end, was it? Didn't really end the way you wanted it to end. I can put my hand on my heart and I can say I am sorry for my part in what happened. Me? Sorry? You must be joking. Everything that you had, you deserved. It was coming from the very start. You truly are on top of the world right now. You've got everything. You've got the Max World Championship. You're advancing in the Golden Gauntlet. You've got absolutely everything. You truly are a fucking goon. You truly are an amazing human. You truly are an amazing friend, an amazing brother, an amazing champion. What you mean to Max, I can't say there's many other people here that mean as much. You as mean you. nothing. You are a waste of time. You are a waste of space. You're a waste of air. You're a waste of breath. You're a waste of... Absolutely everything. All the spices in my cupboard. You're a fucking waste of everything. The fact that I have to sit here and waste my time putting a promo against you. You don't even deserve that championship. You don't even deserve to be in Max. I just have one more question for you, Bia. Just one. That's all it is. And the question is, which version of me is really wearing the mask? We're getting ready to take a break. So before we do, here is a random wrestling a random wrestling fact for you. This WWE Hall of Famer almost won the G1 Climax Final in 1992. Who was this man? Find out after the break. What's up, guys? It's your TV champion here in Cypher, letting all you know to give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash maxwrestling. We're available on all podcast platforms as well. And give us a check out on social media, too, such as Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, and Instagram. Also, check out the beautifully done website 
of maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com. New episodes every Thursday. Come and check us out, like and subscribe. Love you guys. back to the TSK and the Mike Larkin Show. These are the boys. I am El Jefe. Speak my name and I'll appear, but I might charge you. Anyway, make sure you are liking and subscribing right here on the YouTubes. Follow us everywhere and for all your information that you need, head on over to Max Wrestling Weebly, Max Wrestling Net, Weebly.com. Long ass thing. But the answer to the random wrestling fact is none other than the ladies man himself, Rick Rude, believe it or not. So other notable entries in this 1992 G1 Climax, Steve Austin, Jim, the Anvil Nightheart, and Bam, Bam, Bigelow. I know. It was a crazy oh, one. Wow. A lot of WCW wow, okay. guys. Right before they... A heavy hitter. Exactly. Yeah, all yeah. right before they went to WWE. So, still to come, we got to break down this whole week in wrestling from a whole bunch of stuff from TNA to WWE, or AEW, I should say. But first, a first on this show, and it is high time to tap it. I hope it's time that you prepare yourself for a proper rant. This is DC's The 30 Second Meltdown. And here we go. We touched on this in the weekly review show, Mike, when we talked about the fans that were giving WWE shit for taping Monday Night Raw. Because God forbid you allow the wrestlers and the staff and the crew trying to be with their families. God forbid. You know what? They're getting a chance to be with their families. They're away from home for four days out of every week to put on a show for you ungrateful sacks of shit. Be happy that you're getting that much. Beautiful. Be happy that you're getting that Amazing. much. Oh, that's so stupid. It's like with it's. It, I equated to like Dan said. Like we touched upon it on our show, but it's like you know, like they they tape two weeks in advance. It's like hello Thanksgiving. If this was the Vince McMahon era, it would be God damn it, Randy. Human nature hates us all. Go out there and do something. Yeah. So there's yeah. a difference between that mentality and that very much verbose voice and that strongness. To hey, you need some time off. You we're gonna you know guys, we're gonna take a couple breaks, take a little time off, go spend it with your family. It's Thanksgiving. Hey guys, Christmas is coming up. We got here. Take some weeks off, freshen up, let's go. It helps their bodies, it helps their mind. It's everything from their overall tuition and foundation. So number one, again, STFU, ladies and gentlemen, shut the fuck up. But also number two, you complain about two hours of Raw, and you complain that it's been three hours, but hey, but it's two. They compress everything for it to make sense. So it's boom, 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 boom. I equate it to everything. They complain about two hours, they complain about this. People just complain, they whine. Get your panties out of a bunch, goddammit. You know, and of all people to lead the charge on the defense for this on Twitter was Ryback. Yeah. Out of a very, random win for Ryback. Very, very rare Ryback W. What, yeah. is, what timeline are we on? Jim Cornette got points last week. Ryback's doing the right thing. We're fucking going to hell. Next thing you're going to tell me, Vince Russo is going to get a win next week. No. Bro, here's what we're going to do. Let me tell Bro. 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 The Bro, Bro, these two two night pay per views, bro. I oh, hate God. it. Well, save that for later because when we do the bell and I'll, we'll get to that. So yeah, yeah so. we're definitely <laughs> getting to that. We're definitely we're, def- we're definitely we're definitely doing that one. Oh, and boy. let's not forget, a couple years ago, it was Vince McMahon that booked a Monday Night Raw on Christmas Day, and he felt the wrath of Rebby Hardy. <laughs> Perfect. What's good, everyone? This is Beer. This is your NXT review. So anyway, let's get into NXT with the opening match of the night. Seeing Stitch Carter Jackson and Last Legend facing the Dream Team, the Dynamic Duo of Stephanie Van Kerr and Julia. The very, very solid opening match with Stephanie and Julia picking up the win with a double G trigger to the pretty face of Jakarta Jackson. Following the match, Blake Howard is speaking to both ladies and will give confirmation that they will both be in the Iron Survivor Chat Qualifiers. 
And speaking of that, we have the first match of the night with Sister Saul Ruka facing our beloved resident mean girl, Cora Jade. And the mean girl, Soul got snatched. Soul Ruka picking up a huge win and will advance to the Iron Survivor Challenge of December the 7th. Next up, Eva holds a meeting with all the tag teams in NXT. Face Fraxy next. All teams are all arguing, and it leads to chaos. A little bit later on tonight, we've not yet had a decision who will face Fraxy, but I'm still praying. Please, God, it's the Rascals. Anyway, we have the second Iron Survivor Challenge of the night. Seems Wesley facing Cedric Alexander. An absolute banger match for free television. It was a premium live event sort of match, but it was an absolute treat. Wes picks up the win with the Meteora after a drop toe hold and everything to expose steel. Damn you, Wes, a rat bastard. Uh, Kalani Jordan then speaks to ba Baron Saxon and determined to get her belt back from Fallon Henley to be interrupted by Jasmine Nixon and Jason Jane and say if Fallon can't get it done, then one of them will. Interesting. Anyway, Trip Williams then speaks about Ridge Holland after he be was beaten clean last week to be interrupted by Andre Chase. Andre Chase teases a match against uh, Trip Williams, which is going to be a banger. Ridge then interrupts and provokes both men. Trick said he will speak to Ava on one separate match between Andre Chase and Ridge Holland next week. Ridge said if he wins, then Andre Chase's ties with Chase U is completely over and done with. Next up, Nikita Lyons goes one on one with Adriano Rizzo after Lyons attacked Rizzo a few weeks ago after, the, after a bit of a help with Oba Femi. I was still seen Oba for about two weeks, damn it. It was a very decent match, but it's healed Nikita. I'm sold already. Uh, Rizzo attacked Nikita after the match after Lions picked up the win of the Lions War. Hit him with a damn crowbar. Then we go backstage and we see the return of Juke Hudson, Riley Osborne, and Thea Hale asking why is Andre Chase risking Chase you again? And Chase said, Trust me, he's got this. In the last Iron Survivor Challenge of the evening, we had Javon Evans taking on Lexus King. Absolutely really good match to be fair. There was an early spot where Billy Javon got, at, got injured. And Lexus is now actually turned into a guy that's not going to turn into a little sneaky little so-and-so. And it feels like there's going to be a face turn here for Lexus King, and I'm actually a fan of it. Uh, the OG picks up the win with a fantastic corkscrew splash for the 1-2-3. Javon and Lexus shake hands after the match. Deadline is looking very, very, very good. And in the event of the night, we see Fallon Henley defending the NXT Women's North American Championship against Kalani Jordan in an absolute banger main event. Fallon picks up the win with a famous over the one, two, three after JC Jane punched. Punched the poor Kalani in the face with Jasmine Nixon trapped in the referee for the one, two, three. And we end the show with all the tag teams beating the living piss out of each other. Ava did say she wants all the tag teams to prove themselves. But yeah, NXT I thought was a very, very good show. But what time is it? It's time. It's time to go to Say his name, he arrives. The man, the myth, the icon, the legend. The man, my tag team partner, brother, partner. His name is... Moses Marquez, GOAT champion partner. Four is yours, daddy. Pop into it last night on Dynamite. Um, so not what Swerve said that was not Stanford, Connecticut. It was Bridgeport, Connecticut. And they were dead as fuck. So, let's get into 100%. it. 100%. That crowd so does, this mean, yeah. does this mean that the swerve is the R-Truth of, uh, of AEW? <laughs> no, no, the Green Bay! Hey, Truth, we're in Milwaukee! That's what it is. Hey, hey Swerve, we're in friggin' Bridgeport. He's the more to dangerous R-Truth. I love it. God, don't kill me for it. The opening match, Did Hangman, Adam Page, Christian was Cage. The or was the, the commentators? They were pretty terrible, too. It, I love Nigel. You can't give Nigel too much shit. But that, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Um... But again, it was Switchblade, Jay White, Juice Robinson against Hankman, Adam Page, Christian Cage. Um, this fucking match felt weird as shit. But uh, to get it going, felt like a setup for Juice Robinson to eat the pinfall, considering he wasn't, you know, he's just kind of there. He's in the middle of this whole thing between Page and Cage. and Or no, uh, between uh, Cage and uh, and Jay White. And uh, so the tension between it, it's all just, it's, it's fucking weird. They're building, obviously, towards full gear. 
Is it full gear? Yeah, full gear. Uh, early on, Paige has this early even match. It's going back and forth. There's the force tags. Cage has to get himself in. Um, every, I, I know I'm going off on a rant here. I don't know why I am already envisioning Christian Cage as AEW World Champion, but I love it. So hopefully I'm not in the only boat here. I just had to get that off my chest. Uh, Hook comes through the crowd, which shockingly woke them up as he chokes out Nick Wayne. And I actually think, I think he ducks him, if I'm not mistaken. So, he captain yeah. made him and took him out. Yep. Yep. Fucking drag him out of there. Uh, Mass continues on. Honestly, I can give a shit. I want to say Kip Sabian got involved, clocking Juice Robinson with the with that contract, giving uh giving him the opportunity. Page hits the dead eye. They pick up the win. Uh, it's about that. It was it was a decent opener. Again, I'm I'm indifferent on it. Uh, I I have always said I don't know what the fuck a Kip Sabian is. The kid went from being the worst match you ever saw with Sammy Guevara in the first ever AEW show to this, like, blown-up version of his old self that kind of looks like somebody's dad. I, well, I mean, I, when you start out feuding with him and Rusev against the best friends over video games, Mom, he shook at my video games, Mom! And to what we have now, it's just, like, the trajectory arc. And then he's here, he's there, he's nowhere, he's everywhere, and now he's involved in this, and now Christian's like, Oh, my son, let me give you a hug and My son. It makes no sense. They had this embrace the change gimmick where he looked like a, a you know modern Mad Hatter. Um, right. That that could could have did something with that, but that went absolutely fucking nowhere. So that's most of what goes down with him. Absolutely nowhere. We go backstage. Uh, Mercedes Monet is ripping into yeah. her own bodyguard, telling her she can't do shit. This whole whatever, and then she starts talking shit about Chris Statlander. She pops into the back like it's a fucking horror movie. Obliterates the both of them. Obliter yes. like this one lady beat the dog shit out of the champion of two companies and her supposed bodyguard and smashes her through an obvious fake as shit wall, but still smashes her through a wall. Camille is quite literally, quite literally the worst bodyguard in the world. You know, I, let me, I, Dad, Dad, you first. Trying to say, <laughs> yeah, Camille <laughs> went against WWE for this, for mm. this bullshit. Mm. Okay, why? For two million I a year, fam. Makes sense. I know. I got to add on to Mo's point. I love you. So I got to add on to your point, Mo, because you said something that was so beautiful with the whole she's the worst bodyguard ever. This literally feels – this dude, this literally feels like to me like when Moose came into friggin' TNA and then all of a sudden he's a heel. Then two months later he's facing Mike Bennett at Bound for Glory. What they're doing is it's rush, 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 rush. Camille and her are now already having dissension. When Shawn Michaels and Diesel, when Diesel pops into WWF in 1993, they're boys, they're chiming along, you know what I'm saying? The two dudes with attitude. And then you go into WrestleMania 11. You spend, you've spread, you know, you spread it out for a year and a half. Now Tony's just like, we got to get it done in two months. And then Chris Statlander's a baby face out of nowhere because she had an epiphany and she's born again. And I was, you know, she's writing those wrongs and now she blames Mercedes Monet for everything. I hate everything about you. She's having her three days grace moment. So now we enter the trajectory arc of no sense on Chris Statler and there's face there no explanation by the way and then you have the dissension of Mercedes and Camille out of mothballs so you're doing everything and flying by the seat out of your pants and I'm not ready to take my pants off god damn it I'm sorry go ahead hey how you doing no you're not wrong uh but leave your pants on um again I, I always bring I always bring up the money because the money means a lot to me I, I, I believe she's on three million a year yes so no. is it three million or six million I Mercedes. think it's got to be three. Yeah, I think it's three million. Because I know Mercedes? six sounds a bit fa yeah. far fetched. I want to say three million sounds three. about right. I oh, yeah. sorry, I was not ignoring it's, you. It's, I, Tony's a bigger idiot than I think. I, I, I was doing I'll, the math, and, and I'll pay you. Outstandingly ah. pay you. I, I've said hey. this time and time again, and I and, and I bring it up because again, this is Max Wrestling, it based out of the UK, and of course, in the UK, football is huge. And the reality of the matter is, is some top players in the Premier League make about 150 to uh, anywhere between 110 to 190 k a week. If, if if I did this correctly, 
she makes 65k a week which is more than the best championship level teams in the fucking English Football League. That is ridiculous. And she is putting out hot garbage each and every week. Each and every week. It's trash. This is the same woman who said that the women in AEW should have their own female show now. And, you know, I would rank it up against anyone. So she's trying to get, like, a pitch. Like, the women, we should all have our show. This is where the best wrestle. Look at me on Mercedes. Mwah. And that's what I'm saying, man. We're in that mode where she's just going to milk Tony Khan. And she's going to suck him right around the finger. Wrapped hey, around yeah. the finger. I love you, Tony. I love you, Mercedes. It's a love story. No Loves. diddy. No <laughs> Oh, the baby oil is a flowing. Uh, but not in this segment. This was a fantastic segment. Love this segment. Tony Tony Schiavone comes out, brings out Will Ospreay. The crowd gets a little bit of an ovation. I don't want to call it massive. It's a little bit because these fucking people sucked. Ospreay literally doesn't want to talk about anything Shivani wants to talk about. He doesn't give a shit. He wants to go right to Kyle Fletcher. Kyle Fletcher comes down. The kid just shaved his head like last week. He's already got hair. Like. The benefits of being 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're going to look just like Will Ospreay by the time you guys have a match. I swear to God. It's going to be hilarious. But they go into this whole thing, uh, you know, the criticisms, accusing him of being selfish, the hypocrisy, saying like, hey, dude, like, you you slept on my couch. You know what I mean? I helped, I, I helped feed you when you had nothing. I helped get you into the business. I got you into New Japan. I got you into here in AEW. You know so much about me. You know my wife. You know my wife's name. You know where I live. You know where my kid goes to school. My man, my missus ain't cool with it, fam. He was like, he was all about this. He was all, all into his feelings, and they're just the heat, the heat that is between these two. The 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 best friends now having to go against each other because one does not want to longer be in the shadow of the other, which is great. But it's, it, I don't know. I, I've always said guys can lose at the right time. And sometimes it's going to take some chicanery for it to work out. And right now, that is the only way out of this I see. I can see no way where Kyle Fletcher in two weeks gets a super cl a clean, not super clean, just a, any kind of clean, a clean win over Will Ospreay. It's not going to happen. But he will get a win off of Will Ospreay with the help of the Don Callis family. Which kind of sucks. Because, again, the, the, the fucking Will doesn't, need, Will doesn't need any lost momentum. But then you're going to do all this shit for Kyle for nothing. And Will lost on the last pay-per-view. Hey, there we go. So, again, it's it's I'm... As much as I like this feud and the heat that it's getting and the building of Kyle Fletcher, and it's great... I feel like it's the wrong fucking time. Or am I am, am I am I the only one in this boat? It's okay if I'm the only one in this boat. No, I mean when he debuted and he signed like earlier in the year, like well, well, Will Ospreay. I mean, you could have the one year trajectory of you know you signed like a year ago and now he's gonna make his mark. You could have built it to Revolution, give it more time. But we're at a stage in a career where Kyle Fletcher, who last week looked like he was going to my Chemical Romance concert, hey. looking hey hanging out at the skate park, to now just you know being this bald badass, you know, a definitive look, a little subtlety, intricacy, and nuance Dude, to the layer of his character, so to speak, to where we are now. So I mean, you have. Some something that showcases his badassery. He needs to win. And number three, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's it's a battle of the mates. It's something that we all can really sink our teeth into. The only problem is, it's too soon. And I think they should have just layered it out for a few more months, and we had would have had something nice. But no, we're here, we are here now, so I mean, Kyle Fletcher needs that done. We, we don't, we can never have anything nice with AEW, it seems like, recently, lately. But, uh, to your point, yeah, they did, they did do this too soon, which means we're probably going to get a F you finish. So it's the only way it's out just, of it. it. It's gonna yeah, this is the only way to get out of it. It's just gonna keep on going. Which is fine, to be honest. But wouldn't, wouldn't it have made more sense to do like a tag match? Like Yeah. Something to you put have done like maybe Mark Davis and Osprey versus Kyle Fletcher and anybody in the Don Callis family. Any of them. And then what you do you have Mark Davis eat the pin. That way, Osprey technically loses, but he wasn't pinned or he didn't tap. And then you can have, you can even push it into, you don't even have to do it the next pay-per-view. Next pay-per-view, you can do Kyle Fletcher versus Mark Davis. You can then have, after that one, then you can do the Osprey versus Fletcher. Yeah, there's there is ways to stretch this out. 
A thousand so that would percent. make sense. And you know, AEW can do that. And, and and I mean that would be perfect timing because in February they're going to be in Australia. I, I think that would be the best place for Fletcher to win. Right. I, I, Tony, if you're listening, let me know you're, you're welcome. welcome. Start making some goddamn changes, and this has to be one of them. Roderick Strong, Lance Archer, Falls Count Anywhere match. Um, it was a Falls Count Anywhere match. I, I don't I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, it was a cool fucking spot though. That the the, uh, the choke slam. From the whatever the fuck they were at with the goddamn standing one, they were up high. That's all I know. They were yeah, up high. Barbara. Yep. And uh, that looked yep. fucking awesome. What I don't like though, and I'm getting real what? sick of it, and I'm sure Lance Archer losing. When's the last time he won in a singles match? Can uh, anybody answer me that? That's not a everybody. squash. Don't fucking come at me. You know, goddamn squashes in the comments. Don't do it. Well, I, well, I got to say, if I'm Adam Cole, I'm pissed because I had to go through two badassery mother mofos in the House of Black and Kanosuke Takeshita, and here's Roddy over here competing on collision against Shane Taylor, who hasn't won a match since Methuselah was alive, hey, and friggin' the Beast Mortos, and <laughs> and now he's beating Lance Archer. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, and I hate to say this because I love Lance Archer too. Everybody dies. His role is Dallas and, and TNA with Kid Cash, Vance Archer, Lance Archer team with Brian Myers and WWE. There were so many different layers of his character that just screams badassery. Dare I even say the Keeler Elite Squad with him and David Hart Smith. But this right here is just bullshittery to really just detract and really kind of dissect and really kind of, you know, dissipate towards the fact that we have a badass mofo, the murder hawk, if you will. Him and Brian Cage are like the new road warriors squashing every mofo out here up in this piece. But at the same time, you're devaluing Lance Archer for the value that he has. And it's a shame. It's a crying shame. Guys, former IWGP US champ for crying out loud. Yes, sir. Two times. Oh, thank two you. Time. Two, two times. So, again, uh, we get that. There was uh, MJF was looking on, obviously, pretty, pretty amused, I would say, over this whole thing because his whole point is he wants to get these guys worn down. And when we go right into uh, Adam Cole, Kanoshi, Takeshita, I don't think this was a championship match, but no. for some dumb reason, no. fucking F4W put it as that goddamn you, Uncle Dave. So, um, Cole took control early. This match was fun. Um, there was the whole, like, them fighting for the first, I guess, like, two or three minutes through Adam Cole's song. He hits a fucking move. Takesh is outside. He does the Adam Cole. Everybody goes bananas. Then they kept fighting. I fucking love that. You should do it every week. Every fucking week, because it was great. Um, I do need more of this, but the thing that I don't need any more of is the use of this fucking diamond ring. Takesh the busts out the ring, hits a loaded punch, allows him to pick up the dub, MGF is watching from home, laughing. Uh, Strong rushes to the ring, only to be interrupted by, uh, intercepted, I should say, by Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, chases down Takesta, gets him out of the ring. There's a giant celebration. So, I guess the question is, does like Adam Cole try to go on Collision or Dynamite and pick up a win? Has he tried to get another win on Dynamite? Was this the first to three? What the fuck? What are we doing here? There's a lot of questions and no answers. Zero. Um, I was with you on this, like, what now? Like, this is centered around MJF and Adam Cole, and now Adam Cole's out, so now we're going to, is he going to come in and interfere and get in the way of Roddy? Is Roddy going to turn on Cole? Is, you know, what, 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 what's going on here? If I'm, um, if I'm looking at this realistically, realistically, Adam Cole versus MJF, they're not, they're not having them in a triple threat. They're not. They're going to do that at the next pay-per-view, probably at World's End in December, would be my guess. Realistically, MJF is going to beat Roddy, and Cole is probably going to come out for the save. But more importantly, what this match showed me was, God damn it, I need Takeshita as a world champion. The Continental champion haven't beat Okada. In... Oh. No, world champion. I need him as a in... champion. In due time. Try my heart. In due time. Try my heart. In due time. I know. I'm sorry, Mo. I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah. But if I there's anybody you. to go against that boy Kazuchika, it's, it's to catch that. But He's no, you're, you're, you're not I'm wrong. I, I've been saying it myself. If there's if there's an Alpha and Omega 2.0 or an Okada Omega, if you will, uh, changed okay. up with a curveball, it's them all day long. Yeah. And it should happen at fucking Wrestle Dynasty. If not there, then Wrestle fucking Kingdom. Like, I, 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 I mean this. I mean this. 
I think also to add on to Dad's point when he's talking about it being at World's End, I mean, it's the one year, you know, since of tying it together when he was the devil and he's beating up MJF. But I've always said this, and I've said this on the weekly review with Paul and Dan, and I'll say it here with you guys. I mean, it makes no goddamn sense for Adam Cole to be the babyface just because he comes out and calls him a douche, a jack-off, and every goddamn name in the book. I mean, when Triple H Friedman over here came out and brain-busted Adam Cole, that should have been the end of it because he got his revenge, boom, right there. But now we're twisted and turtling and flipping the script, if you will. Now we're friggin' Adam Cole's a babyface, and Roddy Max is a babyface now. And then you have friggin', like... It, it, it's so, like, flippy-floppy and, dare I say, a kerfluffle of just crapola like we really don't need. I mean, but we're going to get it because of the one-year trajectory arc of where we were that started this whole shit, shit, this whole thing thing. But at the end of the day, it just having Adam Cole be the face made no sense because he was the devil. So we're here. We're going to get there. But again, it makes different questions, no flipping sense, and this is where we're at. So we're just going to have to take it and leave it. Ah, I'm going to flip ah, the script. I'm going to flip, flip the, the script. script. I'll fuck my you. I'm fucking you. Come on. Swerve. I love you, but so. Eh. I really would not be shocked to see this happen. I would not be shocked to see Bob the Fish cost Rowdy oh. Bob I the need, Fish. I need Bob the Fish back. Everybody's favorite dad, Bob the Fish. Well, also, we're, Kyle O'Reilly's somewhat into this because they, they like Kyle O'Reilly's watching, but he's over we're, here. We're, we're, late, we're, we're late to soccer practice. Come on. Come on, Bob. Bob. Come on, Bob. Drive, that's the thing, drive too. Me. Get but that's the thing too with Kyle O'Reilly too as well it even makes because he's watching them and then he's over here with the conglomeration so it's like what do we do with Kyle they got Kyle man Kyle. yeah it, it's I a giant Kyle. kerfuffle he's he he the coolest Kyle Keeping of, uh, speaking of kerfuffles I, I, I'm, I'm guessing this has to be Mox's truck I don't know who else's truck this could be it's the same damn black truck shows up all the time they, not uh, Tony's. They, it's not Tony's. They walk out. They say it's time to take over the Super Center, which I have not heard TBS be called the Super Center since I was a young lad watching TBS or yeah, TBS right after uh, fucking uh, uh, fucking wrestling. Oh no, TBS. Oh, it, it was on, it was on TBS, TBS Superstation. That's yeah. right, because Thunder was on TBS. If I'm not mistaken, was it TBS? the TBS Superstation? Yeah, right. So, yeah. And WWE Saturday night. Oh, God. 605 Eastern. 605. My childhood right there. My childhood. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so. Um, they, they, ah, we're old. They're very old. They're going to crash the super station. They end up in the ring. It's not, it's not the super station. That's not the. Like, I was expecting them to be in a fucking TV studio and all kinds. No. Our production truck. Uh, but yeah, at least a production. Thank you, DC. At least a production truck. No. These fucking guys. Where's billionaire? Where's billionaire Ted? Right. Where's, where's the Nacho Man? Where's the Nacho Man? Oh there it is. yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Also, with commentary, friggin', they're like, "Oh my God, he took the cameraman and he's in the ring. Oh my God, he's taking over. They took out JD Drake. Oh my God, the cameraman's in the ring. Like he's taking over. Like, whoa, he put the cameraman in the ring. What, was like, that your camera. Was that your Excalibur impression? They put the cameraman in the ring. Get him a mask. It's almost the same thing. I love that. That was, that was spot love on. It. Spot. Because it was. It was it was hysterical. It was like, really? Really? He, he, he pushed like one camera, dude. Do you guys remember when that one camera guy, we swore to God, was like a wrestler in disguise? And people kept fucking with him? I don't ever remember anybody going nuts when they were fucking with him. Mm -mm. So what is the, what, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? And I get it. Because yeah. it's a cameraman. I get it. We're, we're trying I to make mean, this thing bigger than it is because it's the Nexus NWO. You know what I mean? It's the NWO. It's the Nexus World Order. Okay? They're going to beat you up. They're going to try to look cool. They're going to say some shit. Mox's murder crew. I Sounds would way strongly encourage Tony to watch some vintage 1996, early 97 WCW Monday Nitro. Specifically... An episode that aired from the MGM Park right. in Disney World, Ew. where Rey Mysterio Jr. got yeeted into the side of a trailer. Oh, God. Londar, baby. Londar. <sighs> Watch how the early phases of the NWO, how that was booked. And... That is what this should have been. They kind of had That's the start of that. Should have been. They kind of had the start of that last week. It looked like it was going to be a parking lot brawl. AEW's, you know, goon squad or whatever trying to hold down the fort. That could have been a perfect fucking start, but it's just, they're just, well, we're going to go around them. Okay, but 
Why, why not, like, isn't that the point to look strong, to, like, beat people up? Well, no, we're smarter. Well, apparently not. You, you know, we, we need a good parking lot brawl match again. Like, yes. you think about in the early, you know, uh, or Santana or Ortiz against best friends. Hey, remember there how you fucking, go. Remember how fucking good that parking lot oh, match man, was? Oh, man, so much fun. So Fantastic. much fun. It was on a dynamite. Also, to, to, go, to add on to, like, a Tony part, like I mentioned, I said Excalibur with the commentary, and I know you'll appreciate this, and so will you, Dan and Robert, because this is the video game kid coming out of me. Hey, the way that they acted with the camera coming in was like Tony Schiavone in WCW Backstage Assault. What's he going to do with that? Oh, my God, it's a cameraman. That's legit what it was. That was the reaction, the same inflection in the voice. Oh god, the upward inflection. Yeah, it did it very was very video gaming. You're not you're a thousand percent. Uh so Cassidy shows up, accepts the challenge for, for full gear, giant brawl uh ensues. All of a sudden, uh, Darby Allen leaps off the balcony. Of course, because you know you can't fucking be there without crazy ass Darby. Uh I mean Yeah. Massive fucking brawl. They literally have to drive away. He they're chasing him, he's chasing him in a car. This fucking madman, this fucking Darby Allen. Mad man. Speaking of mad people, uh, Brene Paquette, she's mad. She's all up and down the, the goddamn fucking arena interviewing everybody left and right. Interviews Chris Jericho, talking about Tomohiro Ishii, challenging for the Ring of Honor title. Jericho accepts, reminiscing about his history with Ishii. Calls him, he was a young boy. You know, he used, to, it, he used to wash it, my balls. Do it, Mike. And I fucking died. Oh, well, first of all, Robert and I do this on Demon the Heart Wrestling. We're going to do it here so we can make this everybody great. Right. Chris Jericho, really Chris, Mr. Suck My Dick from the Back. No, Chris! No, Chris! We don't do that here. So, Jericho Hi guys. just... Hi, guys! Ah, Hi. I love you! Hey, everybody! Oh. I'll pay you! Ah. I heart, Corazon de Leon. I love everybody. Uh. So, Chris, Jer <laughs> Chris Jericho and Tomohiro Ishii. Tony likes to do the booking of, hey... Remember that time two years ago when Chris Jericho fought Tomohiro Ishii? It's the two-year anniversary of the Ring of Honor Championship match where Chris Jericho's chest was bleeding from getting chopped out of friggin' mothballs. Uh, you guys remember that from two years ago? So Tony's having a memory of just having this matchup that he just... ...rushed over. So this is why we have this now two weeks after Thanksgiving. This is him giving thanks to us for seeing that matchup two years ago. That's what it is. Tomohiro Ishii, will you give us this masterpiece with Chris Jericho? It was I don't. Two years. I, you, you know, you, I, I love Ishii. Yeah. And, and I, first off, Me I too. appreciate that by all means, because the reality of the matter is, as much as I love Ishii, you're fucking a hundred percent right. This is a match we saw two years ago. We've already said, or I've already said countless times over, this is a bad idea having Chris Jericho as your Ring of Honor World Champion because he's going to face the same four idiots or five idiots that he's been facing. He, far, he wrestled Mark Briscoe three, two times already. It's, yep. And then now we're going to go to Ishii. He's going to find Agreed. some other. He's going to find a Shane Taylor Cole to Cabana. be. Cole Cabana. He, maybe Cole Cabana. Who knows? Maybe if we're maybe fucking lucky. Cabana. But the, again, what about all the other guys that are just hanging out? What? Where's the former uh, Ring of Honor World Champion Roosh? Where's Roosh and Chris Jericho? Where's uh, I heard Bandito's on his way back. Where's Bandito versus Chris Jericho? I'll take Chris Jericho and Samoa Joe. Don't, don't I'll take don't. Jericho. Oh, Jericho, Jericho and Samoa Joe. He put him through the wall. Former Ring of Honor champion, one of the longest reigning Ring of Honor champions. Him and Chris, Samoa Joe. Let's go with that. He'll be back or as soon as. Uh... Uh, Twisted Metal is done. So. Yeah, they're there fucking filming exactly. forever. Here's, here's an idea. Here's don't, call, an idea. don't call John Gresham, though. Oh. No. Oh. You fucking got Sammy that. Guevara, who's just chilling because his tag team partner is without a contract. Oh, Free shit, Dustin, that's bro. right. Smart move, Tony Khan, putting the tag title on somebody that wasn't under contract. You fucking mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, here's an idea. You've got history with Sammy and Jericho. Book us a good feud with Sammy and Jericho. Think what this would do for Sammy's career by putting the Ring of Honor world title on him. I think you literally just made, like, the best example you could make right now. Is that, because there's, who the fuck else is there really to go up against Jericho? Let's be, like, like be for real for a minute and truly think about it. Ring of Honor roster, AEW roster, Who's fucking worth a damn? You really gonna sacrifice to Kyle O'Reilly? No. 
You're going to sacrifice anybody else in that whole conglomeration? Absolutely not. You're going to fucking give him a Malachi Black? No, that's stupid. No, that's dumb. This Sammy Don't thing works beautifully. I like that. I like that way too much. Way too much. Which is why he won't do it. Exactly. Because we fucking know better. Something he needs to continue to do, though, is push Penelope forward. I'm glad she's back. Her versus Britt Baker was actually pretty good. Uh, Britt is finally getting the rust off, but goddamn, is it on thick. Because, like, I, I again, I, and I hate saying it like this because I, I am I, I'm far from the perfect athlete. But I don't understand how you how you decide to take that long off of the business and like not at least get back into fucking shape. You know what I mean? Get the rust off. Hit the ropes. This crowd this crowd just sucked too, because this was probably the match of the night and they were dead. The, this thing is too the most WWE crowd oh, sorry, we've had all year. No, go ahead, Mike. I was gonna say the problem is with people is they forget how Penelope Ford is so good. I mean, you look at her tenure when she was doing the CZW and the Dojo yes. Wars type of vibes, and then she yes, and then she comes in here. And the problem is too with Britt Baker and that, and this goes back to Excalibur because Serena Deeb comes out after the win, and all of a sudden we now have a Britt Baker Serena Deeb feud, and then Excalibur's like, well, the last time we saw Britt Baker was a month ago, and that was her last opponent, and I'm just like, so, exactly. and, and Serena Deeb, who people. They had Serena Deep cry because, again, as someone who has had seizures in his own right, who has had, you know, suffered from seizures, they brought the real life element into her view with, with Tony Storm. But also at the same time, Serena Deep is kind of a heel. She never really transitioned to the babyface, and who doesn't love Tony Storm? So you put her in a feud which was a no win situation because nobody gave her rat's ass. Dare I say, nobody gave two squirts of piss hey. about Serena Deep challenging Tony Storm for that championship. So now you're just putting her in a feud with Britt Baker because Tony's like. Oh! It's the DMD against the professor. Ah, book it. I love you all, Booker of the Year. So that is why we have that now. Oh, goodness. Pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, God, I loved it. Um, things that I loved, and I'm sure there are many in this world that love this segment. And at the same time, there's many that absolutely shit all over it. Renee introduces the returning Mina Shirakawa, hyping her up. Uh, this overall celebration with uh, with Mariah May that has still yet to happen. Harley Cameron interrupts. She says that I heard you're the Harley Cameron of Japan. Well, you can't Harley out Harley Cameron me. And I was already laughing. I normally don't laugh at her shit, but I was already laughing. And they're going to have a match on Collision. And they say it's going to be tit for tit. And may the breast woman win. <laughs> and then the jiggles happen. And it's happening. And it's happening. And Renee's like, you knocked that shit off. And I was just dead. She was, she fucking, it was like the mom of the family. Cut it out. Sorry. So put, the, put Harley Cameron on TV every week. Harley, you, you know what? I used that. to give Harley Cameron all the shit in the world. All the right. shit in the world. She's funny. But she's yeah. not with Saray anymore, so that doesn't hinder her anymore. So she can just go buck wild. Exactly. Yeah. She can go buck wild. I love that. Oh, God. Um,. I hope you guys agree with me on this one. Uh, Swerve Strickland versus uh, Leo Rush. First off, I, I, Leo Rush had like an inflatable jacket. What the fuck is that about? That thing looked inflatable like a motherfucker. Um, why? Well, I mean, don't, don't forget, Leo Rush is only like 5'2". So. This is true. True. Uh, why does he need to get like 80% of this match? Like... Why does Leo need to look like he's going to be the next AEW world champion as he's fucking... Can I answer that? To, lose, to then lose the swerve. Please, do, please answer it. Tony does not believe in squash matches or just having it being short and stout. Because if you remember back in the day, Tony likes the whole 50-50 or 90 and 100 type of vibes where they have to get, or 70-20, so to speak, to make it look even. It's like back when we had Chris Jericho against Peter Avalon, who was a J-Brone to the stars, and they went like 15 minutes on a flipping dynamite. You don't need Peter Avalon, the former Nor Furman from TNA, getting a 15-minute banger with Chris Jericho because Nor Furman is the enhancement talent. Leo Rush in this role, when he's not doing the stuff with Top Flight, who the hell gives a rat's ass about Leo Rush? And I don't mean that disrespectfully because Leo Rush is an amazing talent from his tenure in WWE more on the NXT front as opposed to the, you know, the Ray main roster with him doing the Lashley chant as his manager. 
Tony does not believe it. Just, okay, let's get a little something, something in there. Then we go right to the finish. We have to have it a banger. And as much as I like Leo Rush, this got way too much time. And Swerve should have just got it done. Bing, bang, boom, and we're out of here. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So there funny. it is. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I, I don't. I don't like it, but Swerve ends up picking up the win, hits big pressure after the match, uh, challenges Bobby Lashley to a fight. Obviously, Bobby Lashley appears on the stage. MVP is there, but you forget about Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin jumps from behind. There's the fucking them beating up everybody. So not only do we have the Nexus World Order beating the shit out of people, and I mean everybody, and then you know what I mean, but now the the the, the Hurt Syndicate. The, the Hurt Corporation, I don't want to call them the syndicate, that sucks so bad. The Hurt Corporation, that sounds better, kind of better. They're beating everybody ass too. And I said it last week with the boys, and I'm sure Mike's going to fully agree with this one too. AEW is the land for you to invade. So then I let's mean, have a good invasion. Fuck it. You know it's what I'm like if you have... It's like if you have the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega because, like, six months ago, like, Christopher Daniels, if you ordered Adam Pierce off a of wish, and I love Christopher Daniels, but you have the problem of him six months ago being that buffer for Tony Khan. It's like the Young Bucks if he comes back with Kenny Omega because that makes no sense because they took out Kenny Omega, and then Christopher Daniels is like, oh, guys, we need you here. Why are you leaving us? So you have that type of dichotomy, and I agree with you, Invasion. That'd be like the Young Bucks coming up and sticking up for AEW when six months ago they wanted to kill AEW. You have all these factions, the top flight, the Leo Rush trying to add an edge to them. You have the Beast Mortos and LFI over here with Jake the Snake Roberts. There's faction warfare, there's invasions, and everybody just wants to go buck wild and go haywire. It's the land and island of misfit toys. It's the island of misfit toys. Wow. It's like spot fucking on because it's what it feels like. And, and, and it's, you know, because of that, because of it being so open and, I guess, chaotic, it's fucking any more like... It, it, it's like video games. It's, it's a massive... Multi, it's an MMORPG. You know what the fuck's gonna happen? Craziness is everywhere. For all you know, a guy's fucking a sheep. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, we get a, a backstage segment. Jamie Hayner hits at some upcoming plans. She gets interrupted by uh, a Julia Hart segment, which I, I don't I didn't get it, but I loved it. Uh, I'm not, I, didn't, I, I didn't, loved. I loved it. She's coming back. Cool. Yeah. So. We mentioned, cool. Merce- we mentioned Mercedes earlier, and I was talking with Rob about this, and I want to bring it to the forefront with you and Mo here. Uh, you know what it is, too, man? Like, with Julia Hart, her interrupting with Jamie Hayter, if Jamie Hayter's the first person that she goes after, it makes no sense because there's no history there. I said to Rob, I'll say it to you, Dan, and I'll say it to you, Mo, my bro. The thing that we need to have here is Julia Hart, last time we saw her, was that Mercedes Monet. She lost the women TBS championship to Willow Nightingale. There was that interaction where Sir Mercedes Monet was briefly a face into her inception in the company. It's like, go back to Julia Hart. She's the one who should beat Mercedes Monet. You know what I'm saying? If we get Julia Hart and Jamie Hayter, going to be a good, good match. But it's like, who do, who do you have cares? What's the rhyme or reason for this? You have to have a rhyme and you have to have a reason for this. Love the Love the vignette. I think it's great. I think she's very, very talented. She's so underrated. Give this woman her flowers. But a Julia Hart, Jamie Hayter thing? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know how else to put it. You know what wasn't weird, though? And probably the best thing, in my opinion, was the main event. And uh, I, I got to get my fucking... I got the, You're pissing me off, DirecTV. You're pissing me off. These fucking overruns are going like overruns. six, seven minutes, overruns. and you're overruns. cutting my fucking overrun. I'm in the middle of a goddamn soap commercial. Like, all right, here we go. We're cutting back. No. Gone. Fucking so. Gone. Fuck you, DirecTV. For real. Fuck you. Thank God AEW uploads their fucking overruns to, to YouTube. This thing was awesome. Um, I, again, FTR. They've fallen back. They're nobody. They're just there, but I don't give a shit. Still FTR. House of Black looks fantastic. Brody King is the fucking man. You can never go wrong with Brody King. Um, they end up getting the victory after the match. Kings of the Throne repeatedly, uh, respectfully shake the hands of FTR while Private Party is watching in the distance. And I'm hoping, praying to to even the, to 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 the demi gods I shouldn't say it that far I'm probably gonna get fucking voodoo on me, but I'm praying to everybody that I can that this is finally the fucking opportunity that you do something more than the bullshit trios titles with the House of Black. 
It needs to be now. We've already said that Private Party is going to be a fucking transitional champion. I've already said it. I'm almost uh, positive at this point that they will not walk out of full gear champions. And I really think it's it, it's going to go right to the House of Black. Or at least it fucking should. Or at least it should. You know, the path that Tony Khan is on, I would not be shocked if Private Party pins House of Black. I got to put it out there, D. I got to manifest and put it into the universe. Thank universe. you. Like, come on, bro. I am a pessimistic asshole. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I think we established that at the beginning of the show. So, yeah. I'm saying it again. I'm saying it well, again. I mean, I can say it again. That, dude. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Oh. Say it again. Again. But that's the thing, too, to add on to Dan's point. It's like private party. The way I feel about this raid and how we have the outrunners in here now who are over like Rover with their gimmick and everything that they're putting to the table. You have the House of Black, you know what I'm saying? Just everything with Malachi Black and Brody King. Love them together. And you also have the I, the last team. It's either going to be the Acclaimed or it's going to be Los, you know, LFI. So my thing, too, is you have already two babyface teams in here with private party and the outrunners. So my guess is we're going to have LFI. So you have the two heel teams that being LFI and the House of Black, but with Private Party, it almost feels like it's just like, okay, guys, you've been here for five years since day one, the Inception AEW. Here's the championships. Just just here. Take it. But you know what? We're probably going to give it to House of Black or someone else in there. I I would be shocked if they retain, but I think this is just kind of like, here you go, guys. You deserve this. Kind of like when Tommy Dreamer won the ECW championship against Taz back in 2000 because of the whole Mike Awesome debacle that happened. Yeah. Here you go, Tommy. But Tommy never wanted to hold the title, so it's just like, here you go, Private Party. The fat chick filler. My bad. I couldn't help myself. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. It, it, we'll see how it goes. We're two weeks out of, what is it, full gear. But you know where else we're two weeks out of? Promo Series 9, Shoot to Kill, coming at you November 28th. It is our last big event of the year. And, of course, we still have Christmas Clash and the Maxis. But Promo Series are uh, one of our big original five. And as promised, major changes have been made. One thing that cannot change, and that is tradition, as it would not be promo series without the, tra the traditional winner stays on gauntlet for the Knowledge Champion. First up uh, is yours truly. I will be going up against the defending champion, Phoenix. If he gets past me, he must go up against the multiple-time, long-reigning television Knowledge Champion, Kenny Killa. And if somehow, some way, he can get past him, he must go up against the most dangerous opponent of all, the Man of Mystery. So who will walk away the Knowledge Champion? Who will make it all the way to the end? And speaking of gauntlets, the Golden Gauntlet is almost over. And next week, winner will go on to challenge Cypher for the television title. And it goes down under TV rules. This gauntlet has been epic and unpredictable. And all the credit goes to Cypher for setting it up to find his new challenger. During all the mayhem that was the Golden Gauntlet, a new rivalry was born as I was eliminated by a newcomer. In a pure John Cena versus Kurt Angle kind of moment, Blade Rodriguez knocked me out of the tournament. And we will meet again, this time at Promo Series, and it will be under my favorite Luck of the Draw rules. Whichever promo is closest to the time randomly picked on that day will be the winner. And, as I mentioned, changes are a coming due to extenuating circumstances. The previous main event will be postponed, which leaves the main spot, main end spot wide open. And we do have one title left to defend. One half of it is here. So, for the second straight year, Beer goes one-on-one -on -one with the podcast machine, Michael Larkin, at promo series. But this time, it is for the biggest prize we got, Beer's World Championship. Can Larkin celebrate his eighth anniversary with the top prize, or is Beer winning the looking to win the league and carry it all the way home? Once again, this comes your way November 28th as we also predict Survivor Series War Games. Go to maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com forward slash promo series for more information. You can listen to the theme song right now, Behind Enemy Lines, from the debut hour Monster, available on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and anywhere you get your music. Go check out Captain's Revenge. Whole mouthful right there. Promo series coming hot and heavy. Speaking of coming hot and heavy, we got two boards. We check them twice. One's nice, one's not so nice. It's time to get into it. It's time to put some points on the bell end board. A bell end? You're a bell end, mate. Look, bell end one, bell end two. Big veiny bell end over here. Bell end board. I'm going to kick it off. 
Um, I've been very political these last couple of weeks, and we're going to keep on the political train. So I am oh, giving boy. a whopping – see, Donald Trump is on 110 points, tied with the sex ring. 75 points to one Linda McMahon for donating – Ten million dollars to the Republican bullshittery, and congratulations for being a part of the fucking bullshit, goddamn cabinet that is going to fuck our country. Seventy-five points to you, Mrs. McMahon. So, Thank uh, you. any of y'all want to add any points to that shit? Because that shit pissed me off Ugh. when I found out that she donated ten million. Ten million, fam. She's in. Ha- she's the head of his transition team. So you I, know she's what? the head of uh, she's 20 points for that. The Secretary of Commerce. That's what I'm gonna add it. He's got 20. I'm gonna add a 40 for Linda McMahon. Oh, that's dude. That's that, 115. She's on top of the stage. He makes me want to drink a 40. She's on top of it all. I love it. Well, fuck it. If we're gonna boot that, I gotta put him right back on top 50 because you're a fucking a hole for another Donald Trump. So Donald Trump on 160. We got Linda McMahon on 115. The Sex Ring on 110. Eric Bischoff on 108. Tony Khan on 93. Any more points we want to no, add I, this I, week? I, I gotta give Tony Khan seven points just to get to oh, an even hundred. All right, even hundred for Tony Khan. I, I like even numbers. I like even numbers. I would like to. I have two for the uh, the Bellin board <laughs> since we mentioned them earlier. <laughs> Let's go collectively. I would like to give I would like to give forty points respectively to both collectively to Vince Russo, Bro, and Jonathan Coachman. Oh, because they on their new show. So to those on their new show, they were on the Coach and Bro, as it's called, the Coach and Bro. With no, no, bro, it's not. No, it's not. Don't, yes, it is. don't tell yes, me that. It is. So he, they're talking bro. about how they how they talk about how they hate the two nights of WrestleMania. He's like, I hate the two nights of WrestleMania. Bro, me too. They're, they're watering it down. You know, everybody's got to be on the card. We got to water it down. It's coach. not like it was. And then Coach mm-hmm. is like, I remember, you know, the Super Bowl to me, as you know, Vince, when I was there, who deserved wasn't even a word. It was just that wrestle here, and then they go up and up and up. That's a Super Bowl to me, not this two nights. Nobody deserves anything. Everybody was not based on storyline. It was WrestleMania. You had the matches here, and you had the matches up here. And Vince is like, bro, Coach, I agree 1,000%. They're watering it down. Who cares about two nights? The rest WrestleMania that I know was in one sitting and felt like this big celebration. Now they've watered it down. What happened to when I was booking in the Attitude Era? Moses Marquez, you were there when you saw me in WCW 2000 when I had the 3.5 rating. I'm going to say it 10 more billion freaking times because in case they don't know, the characters is what makes it. Bro, WrestleMania two nights, who gives a rat's ass? I don't give a rat's ass about two nights of WrestleMania. They can have three nights of WrestleMania. It doesn't even matter because I'm not going to watch it, bro. I got better things to do with my time, bro. I can play some fantasy baseball over here. I can listen to my record collection. But all in all, bro, they watering it down, bro. So I individually give 40 (laughs) points to Vince Russo and Jonathan (laughs) Coleman for their bitch-assness about the two nights of WrestleMania that we all know and love because we don't want to sit in six hours of freaking WrestleMania and go into bed at 1230 or 1 o'clock in the morning. Booyaka, Sean. That was glorious. Fantastic. That was glorious. All right, that leaves us beautifully put... New entrance to the board. Let's go to the good side, and hopefully we can match the points. Let's move on to the breath board. Bruv, bruv, brother, bruv, 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 brother. You know what? I'm going to give it to Ryback. Give, give, oh. give, him, a good, give him a good 20, because you know <laughs> what? We, we, got, we got these rare, rare, super rare moments where Ryback is actually on the right side of history for actually standing up for the wrestlers having time off for the holidays and defending, you know, the the right thing mm. versus these fucking nerds and dorks on the internet. Give, give, him, a, give him a good 20, you know. The, he earned it. He earned it. I love it. I got I got some points to work. I got 20 points to the Motor City Machine Guns. Hey, who, all right. Uh, reports have come out. They have ingratiated themselves to the SmackDown locker room as, and they're being seen as easily approachable but getting along great with everybody backstage and you know it, it, it can be difficult for well-established tag teams to do that and there yeah. hasn't been a single report of any issues with them so you know collectively 20 points each i like that 20 points each to the most machine guns beautiful stuff i again i i love their run hearing that warms my heart 
Again, I do remember there was a time and point where a lot of guys were still very iffy about going to the E, and now the guys that kind of probably weren't going to go are going and are getting this nice shot. I'm glad they're at least not being dickheads. Good job. This is what fucking pro wrestling's about. Um, 20 points each for me. For uh, oh. Mina Shirakawa and uh, yeah. Harley Cameron for being the breast of luck. This is why fucking Mike and is on the just show. For be- just for being entertaining and just the overall spark there. And I think I will give a 30 points just because I'm loving Io Sky, Io Shirai doing the damn thing. Number one contender for Liv Morgan. Like the matches she put in in the Battle Royal and everything that she did this week and just everything that's coming together. I got to give it to Io Sky because she is an unsung hero and she's rightfully getting the flowers that she deserves. Oh, absolutely. The Jiggles will always live on forever, and Dame and Renee you know, honestly, is a hater. I got another one. I got oh, more. Okay. I've got t- two people, 10 points each. Gunter. Yep. And 10 points for Ludwig Kaiser. Oh. Yeah. Because well, it's looking like we're getting a Ludwig Kaiser Gunter feud. Hey. I like that. I like that. You know, it looks like they're headed that way. You know, I don't thinking, wondering who's going to be the heel, you know, personally. I'd say keep Gunter as heel, but, you know, they kind of Gunter admitting that, hey, Cody was the better man. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm liking this. I'm wanting more. I like that. Give uh, me more. 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 Oh my God, not to give the me last more. one to add on to Dan. I will give 10 points to four people. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. To the bloodline and Sami Zayn talking oh. about Roman. I can see it on your face. You're smiley. You love me. Like that, that whole thing. I love the dynamics. So I will give it to the OG bloodline, 10 points each. OG you know what? Just because Mike ah, gave, uh, gave points to the OG bloodline, I'm going to give it to the new bloodline. 10 points yeah. for Jacob, Jacob Fatu. <laughs> this, man, <laughs> this man consistently loves Solo. You need somebody in your life like Jacob Fatu to give some consistent love like that. Oh, fucking damn, bro. <laughs> Hold, wait a minute, hold on. You thought, I thought, I see, I went a different way with what you talked about. Solo, I love you. I thought you were going to give him no, a it, 10 points. No, I think I did it right. I love Solo. You, I love so you, Solo. I thought you were going to give him 10 points for the most gangster promo I've ever seen that he uh, cut on freaking Roman. Like, that freaking promo was amazing. Like, just Jacob Fatu dog walking people's ass, man. Jacob Fatu is the man. Fatu-ing. Oh, God, I love it. God, do the all right. We're overdoing the points. I'm adding another 15 to the unthinkable's name because this happened last week. So last week he he, he went up against Jake Hager calling him a fuck or no, it was a so going up against somebody calling him a fucking idiot. He's repeated it himself this time going up against Jake Hager saying he's losing brain cells. So I'll give him another 15 points for calling out stupidity, Mr. My Trump being Jake Hager. And that's a shit ton of points. I don't think he's ever given that many points out. But one thing we haven't said a lot, and I'm going to fucking bring it back. If there's anybody you want to give Bell End points to or Bruv points to, let us know in the comment section and we will add them on and announce them next week. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. Hope we watch you harder than the U.S. was rocked with all of the fucking idiots that Trump announced for his fucking cabinet. But before we get on out of here, Mike's got something he wants to say. His blood alcohol level is just rising to the top. He failed the breathalyzer. He failed his test, man. Let me tell you something about here. After promo series, the boy's going to sober up. Let's just put it that way. Once the championship is around my waist, around my lovely shoulder, the boy's going to sober up. I got the Kleenex ready. It's okay. You can can track your tears, the sorrow, the tears, the sadness, the anguish after he loses. It's going to be a beautiful thing, Moses Marquez. The man is on a ultimate high, and he is the ultimate drunkard right now, but somebody needs to sober him up, and that man's name is Mike Larkin. I'm going to do it. It's promo series. It's my event. Promo series. It's his event. I love it. So, speaking of something that's his, let's jump into a beautiful edition of what is in store from the TSK. So, um, the beautiful thing about the TSK is as well, for the foreseeable future, we're taking over Max Wrestling. Each and every week we'll be here every every goddamn Thursday for your listening and viewing pleasure. And at the same time, as they happen, we will be covering pay-per-views. So, with that being said, next Saturday, not this Saturday, the following Saturday, 
I want is it Saturday or Sunday? Next Saturday. 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 We get full Saturday. gear, and then I want to say, is it the following Saturday or Sunday after that is Survivor Series? November thirtieth. Thirtieth. Yes. That's right. So thirtieth. Okay, so it's the following week. So the following week, yeah. So the twenty third. Oh, then we got we got another one. We have like three in a row. We have uh, full gear. We have Survivor Series, and then December seventh is NXT deadline. So we have three ah. right in a row. Three in a row, so the predictions will come hot and heavy, and so will the reviews. So, hey, how you doing? So, of course, you guys know how the gimmick goes. we got to let everybody spill their deal and let y'all know what is going down. So, because Mike is the special guest of today, what's the haps, Mike? What's going down on your page over there? Congrats on the 1K, by the way. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate your kind words at the end of the show. That really meant a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure being on the show um, and just doing the damn thing with y'all. So if y'all want to check out Mike Larkin 92, subscribe because you get to see that face and Daniel Crimmins and Paul Morales and I for the weekly review. Uncaged, we just wrapped up our season four with the Blackhearts over here with Robert Davis and, of course, hey. the Demoness Nicola McDonald. For where we talked about the Tribal Chief, we're going to put the ones in the air for Roman Reigns, the one true Tribal Chief. Uh, we had a special Wrestle Dream predictions where this one was gimmicked out as well as Nikola. The Black Hearts were in full effect on that episode, right. which was so fun. Uh, more on the mic, but mics are coming. Uh, there's just been a lot on the table. Go to the YouTube page. It's be right there. LFCfights.com, StephenMikeShow.com. There is a lot going down. I've put in a lot of the archive shows on my channel as well with new shows. Content is constantly coming, and I appreciate everyone that's been checking it out. And as well with this fine show, a lot of the archives of Max Wrestling are on my channel as well. So if you want to see the catalog, if you want to see the legacy if you want to see the lineage go Wait. on over to mike larkin 92 and subscribe and check out all the goodness not my goodies yeah my hey. goodies to quote sierra pants are not coming off but we no. may talk about sucking your dick from the back robert davis say it with me no chris goodness. Goodness gracious. i love you guys you guys fantastic rob what's the haps what's coming up next for you Hey, you know what? I've got 33.31% of Deep Into the Heart of Wrestling here with me. Hey. I've got 75% of Kicking It with the TSK hey. here. We've got a lot of things going on. Everything that Mike just said, <laughs> that's what we got going on. So we'll be predicting uh, some shows coming up here soon. So we'll probably be throwing out some predictions for uh, Full Gear. We're probably going to be doing predictions for Survivor Series, NXT Heat Wave. We have our Origin Series coming back. We'll hey. be doing Carry and Cross. Um, we've got a really fun episode we've been talking about for weeks now where we're going to talk about uh, Diddy and the making um, the band yeah. make the things uh, we've yeah, we got, got the, coming over. We got the, yeah, we got the Pop Culture History Podcast. I'll add on to his point. So with the light events of Diddy being out there, we're going to react and we're going to watch the Making the Band Cheesecake walking three oh, hours no. to freaking Juniors and three oh, hours no. back. Yes, we're going you know, there, Moses. We Marcus. are going there. Oh, uh, my God. That's going to be over on Deep Into the Heart of Wrestling. Any of uh, those links you want to hit, uh, Linktree forward slash Blackhearts EBD3. You'll find uh, the link to Mike's YouTube. We got a Facebook. We got an Instagram. We're over on the TikTok now, which is uh, getting some steam. We're on Twitter. We don't call it X. Fuck you, Elon. Um, you know, we've got Kicking It with the TSK. We've got... Well, we've got our own Instagram. We've got our own Facebook uh, over on the Max Wrestling YouTube. We've got some episodes there. We've got some uh, lost episodes in the pipeline that'll uh, hopefully see the light of day soon. Uh, Linktree forward slash kicking it with the TSK K-I-T-T-S-W-1. I believe that is the um, what we'll put the right link down below. Oh, it's but uh, that's that's all we got going on over here. And if you want to come. Talk to me about, uh, you know, the, the tribal chief for uh, pasta or, oh my gosh, there goes my phone. Um, I, I might need a new phone, so if you got a new phone, come <laughs> see me, uh, link tree forward slash, hey, it's Rob. Hey, it's Rob. Don't man, let's pray the phone, hey, bro. DC, the pundit's been waiting. I've been waiting. The fans have been waiting. So you will be seeing that tomorrow. Oh, let's see, this will be going up Friday. Yes, you will be seeing it Friday. Hey. I want... I re-recorded re it. Wasn't happy. I want it to be right. That's I like. You know, that. I'm, I'm. I was raised. If you're gonna do something, do it right. Kind of do it right. There you go. And we got uncaged. Our next season is coming back. Our first episode. This is gonna be a good one. One of the most controversial WWE stars of all time, Muhammad Hassan. Oh yeah. What went wrong? 
what we would have done differently, that is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah, so we're going to cover Muhammad Hassan from his days as Mark Magnus in OVW going against Johnny Jeter, who would let her go beyond a Johnny and the Spirit Squad. So there's a lot to analyze, dissect, and decipher on that show. Wow. I love it. There's so much happening. Thanks to Mike having everybody who have the ability to do all this fun stuff. So we appreciate you so we can bring out all this fun content. Speaking of content outside of the, the TSK takeover, continuing for the foreseeable future and whatever fun stuff we drop, the Max Football Pod is on its way back. The U.S. men's national team. Yes, I know I'm an American. I'm talking football. It's soccer for over here, over there. It's different, but that's outside the point. U.S. men's national team just played Jamaica, played well. We're going to talk about that. We're going to break that down in three weeks time in three weeks time the mls the major league soccer gets a brand new team based here in beautiful sunny san diego california and it turns to draft time i will take a deep deep dive into the eligible players that the uh, san diego fc can pick up five players that are gonna make a true difference and make us maybe not make a run for the league but definitely make an impact in our first season so you got some max wrestling you got some max football pod you got some mike larkin you got some some pundit you got some some black cards we got it's just everything there's just so much happening and the only way you could do it cake. Cheesecake. It's follow us all on all the fun socials. You can do the Max Wrestling UK, Captain 512, SMR Pod Net, Max Football Pod, and of course, everything these gentlemen dropped. And of course, head on over to the beautifully done website, maxwrestlingnet.weeby.com. Hit the subscribe button, follow button, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Speaking of TikTok, as soon as you're done with this, go check out Cypher the Prophet's TikTok because he's going to hit you up with the official post show of Max Wrestling After Max. And of course, join us next week as we predict full gear and our go home show to promo series find out who the final entrant will be in the golden gauntlet it goes down next week so as they say canadia goodbye and good night Bang. Subscribe. Yes. 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 Yes.